So I'm reaching the end of my base training phase. Uh, fatigue level, high. <laughs> Um, and racing this weekend as well, which is just a test race early season to see how things go. But um, I've just been swimming in the pool again at lunchtime, my usual daily swim, and thinking more about the shoulder. So we looked at the big muscles of the shoulder last week, and of course I think about the big muscles a lot when I'm swimming, and how I'm going to use those muscles to get maximum power and get a nice long stroke and move myself and that sort of thing. But something that's also really important to swimmers and other people who use their shoulders a lot is um, not just the wide range of mobility that we have, but how is the humeral head secured and held within that joint? Because it's, it's quite an open face, um, which is great. It means you've got a wide range of movement, but you need to hold that humerus securely. There are six scapulohumeral muscles we talked about a couple last week, right? we talked about deltoid and we talked about teres major. But the other four which come up all the time are the rotator cuff muscles. So the rotator cuff muscles, their main job is to um, support the humeral head within that glenoid fossa and to keep that shoulder together. And those muscles are reasonably big, but they have to pass across a small space and they get rather small in tenderness and a number of people will have problems with their rotator cuff muscles because they're small and they've got quite a big job to do and they suffer from overuse injuries and that sort of thing. So let's go to the lab. I'll take a break from marking exam papers. Let's go to the lab and talk about the rotator cuff muscles of the shoulder briefly. All right, let's go. All right then, uh, we can use this guy. No photography, unless you're me. <laughs> I can do that. No food and drink. I can't do food and drink either. Um, we'll use you, but I've also got a very nice upper limb model. Whoa. So I, I really like this model. Um, this is another one of Ruli's models. These are beautifully made, and this is uh, kind of kind of a rubberized plastic. Some bits are harder than others. I would love more models like this. I'd love a lower limb model like this as well, um, just to show musculoskeletal stuff. Um, but it'd be nice if the muscles were nice and stretchy. And this one, it seems like maybe it's gone a little bit harder over time, but it is prone to falling apart when you touch it. Which I think puts students off a little bit. And it is a bit of a pain putting back together, but then that's all part of the learning process, right? which is why we have a bit left over here. Um, so we were looking on the, uh, the model last week of the, of the large muscles of the shoulder region that tend to act on the upper limb and move the humerus and what have you. And we looked at deltoid, and here's the deltoid muscle. So I say there are, there are six uh, scapulohumeral muscles. So that, mean, that is to say six muscles passing between the scapula and the humerus. And we looked at the deltoid and we talked about how the deltoid holds the humerus into the joint, into the, into the glenohumeral joints. When you're carrying something heavy, um, the, the weight is carried from the axial skeleton through trapezius and other muscles through the scapula and then from the scapula and the clavicle down to the humerus and everything's held together, right? Um, and that's one of the roles of the deltoid muscle. Now I mentioned uh, supraspinatus. So supraspinatus, I said, starts off the abduction of the upper limb and then the deltoid muscle can take over and then trapezius takes over to rotate the scapula. Do you remember? Um, and I mentioned that the deltoid muscle can also do flexion and extension of the humerus at the glenohumeral joint. What I probably didn't mention is about um, rotation, right? We also have medial rotation and lateral rotation. So if you think about it, this is the humerus that's rotating here at the glenohumeral joint, right? Yeah, so the humerus is, is, is rotating like this. So, so this is what we've got. So this is medial rotation and this is lateral rotation. And you can see how the, the humerus is rotating here. So it's rotating inwards and outwards. Now, 
most of that is occurring up here and these multipennate fibers of the deltoid muscle can contribute to this you can imagine how the anterior muscles can pull this way so they can add they can uh, contribute to medial rotation and how these posterior fibers here can pull the other way and contribute to lateral rotation but there are some deeper muscles. When we take off the deltoid muscle, then we'll see the rotator cuff muscles, and supraspinatus is one of them. Uh, so if we take off deltoid, the other... Ooh, it's heavy, that. The other muscle that we talked about was teres major, here. So teres major, we said, runs from the scapula to the humerus. And can you see how this is a, a right upper limb? So there's the thumb. So this, is a, so this is a right upper limb. And can you see how here's teres major here? And I said that teres major is forming uh, the posterior border of the axilla, right under here. But do you see how it's running from the scapula? But then it's running to the anterior part of the humerus. Let me take off biceps so you can see a little bit more easily. You see how it's running to the, the anterior part of humerus. That means that if this muscle contracts, it's going to pull the humerus this way, isn't it? So teres major then is also a medial rotator of the humerus. So deltoid and teres major are muscles linking the scapula and the humerus but they're not rotator cuff muscles. The rotator cuff muscles are deeper or closer to the glenohumeral joint and they, uh, they have another function. And there are four of those. So we see one here, two up here, and then three, and there's a fourth here, but it's actually difficult to separate these two muscles. So here is supraspinatus. Now this is the scapula, and this is the spine of the scapula here. Turn you around. So that matches. So here's his right arm, here's the scapula, here's the spine of the scapula here. So this, this fossa, this groove here is filled with supraspinatus. But look, there's a hole through here. So supraspinatus is attached to the scapula, superior to this, this spine here, but then the tendon passes through this gap. This is the acromion, right, the highest part, the acromion acropolis, the highest part of the scapula, the, bit you can, the bony bit you can feel up here. It passes underneath there and inserts into the humerus. Uh, and this, is, this, can, this muscle then is able to pull on the humerus up here and that starts off abduction of the humerus, right? Which is why I say supraspinatus, then deltoid, and then trapezius. Um, because this, because of overuse injuries with the shoulder, if this tendon gets inflamed, it's passing through a fi fairly small gap. So that it inflames, it swells, it gets even more annoyed, and we tend to have a bit of a problem here, and some people get tendonitis of that tendon. So if that's supraspinatus up here, and this is the spine, then what's this muscle here? Infraspinatus. Very good, well done. So yeah, this is infraspinatus, inferior to the spine of the scapula. And you can see again how this is passing out also to the head of the humerus here, right? Now, as we are posterior, um, if, you, if you shorten this muscle then, what's gonna happen to the humerus? All right, so the muscle's running across here to the humerus here it's going to cause lateral rotation. Yeah, so if the if infraspinatus contracts, it's going to pull the humerus around this way and it's going to cause lateral rotation. Now the muscle down here, if this is teres major, this muscle here is teres minor. 
It is difficult to tell the two apart. When you're dissecting, you can separate the two muscles. They are distinct muscles, but to start with, they look like one single muscle. But this is teres minor here. So this is also running from the scapula to the humerus around here. So teres minor then, if you contract that muscle, is also gonna give lateral rotation. So teres minor will give lateral rotation, but teres major here, because it passes to the other side, will do the opposite, will do medial rotation. Tricky, huh? Um, and the other thing about these two muscles is they have different innervation. Supraspinatus and infraspinatus are both innervated by the suprascapular nerve, uh, but teres minor is innervated by the axillary nerve, the same nerve that innervates the deltoid muscle. Confusingly, teres major is innervated by the subscapular nerve. Ooh, I'm making it worse, am I? Probably, sorry. So these two muscles are innervated by the suprascapular nerve, whereas this muscle is innervated by the uh, axillary nerve, which shows that these two muscles are separate things. Well, they're two muscles, they have separate connective tissue surrounding them, and they have different innervation. Um, all of those nerves, by the way, come from the brachial plexus, which of course is very nearby because it's running through the axilla. So there's supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor. The fourth and final muscle of the rotator cuff group is this muscle here. This is subscapularis. So if I turn the skeleton around as well, um, we're now looking at uh, this scapula here, right? So this muscle is, is underneath here. Right? So that muscle's underneath there, which is tricky, isn't it? So it's, it's between the ribs and the scapula, right? So this is subscapularis, it's deep to the scapula. You can see how it's running from the deep surface of the scapula again to the humerus. Uh, and it's inserting here. Now I took the biceps brachii muscle off, but you can see, uh, you can see how where that attaches there. If I take, yeah, so we take biceps off, and you can see that this is deep to the biceps. Uh, there's the long head, there's the short head. That means that the long head is running through this groove here. This means that these fibres are inserting into the lesser tubercle up here and this medial edge of the bicipital groove here. So, um, if the fibres are running this way and they pull on the humerus, what's going to happen? It's going to give medial rotation. So subscapularis anteriorly will give medial rotation and the other guys posteriorly will give lateral rotation and supraspinatus will give abduction. So here's triceps, so we're looking at the posterior arm, so here's the spine of the scapula, here's the clavicle up here, here's supraspinatus running through there, there's the acromion of the scapula there, so supraspinatus is running inferiorly to that and inserting to the humerus up here. Here is infraspinatus and here is teres minor here and there is teres major. These tendons are all inserting into different facets of the greater tubercle of the humerus up here. So here's the head of the humerus here, here's that bicipital groove, there's subscapularis inserting here, here's supraspinatus, there's infraspinatus, and there's teres minor. All right. Okay, so um, those are the muscles, those are their attachments, and those are the movements that they can perform. Um, but their most important function is that they're holding the humerus in place. They're holding the humerus into the glenohumeral joint and into the scapula. And the the fibres of the tendons actually merge and blend and support the connective tissues of the glenohumeral joint of the synovial capsule and what have you. So they're forming the structure of the joint. Um, their tone keeps the head of the humerus into the scapula. So if one of these muscles is damaged, then that's going to reduce the strength and the function and the effectiveness of this joint. Um, also, 
Because these fibres are inserting so high up into the humerus, they're not involved in adduction of the humerus. So if, if we talk about abduction like this, these um, rotator cuff muscles are not going to bring the humerus back to the body because they're, they're pulling on the head. If they pull on the head, they're just pulling the humerus back into the glenohumeral joint, right? For adduction, for you're using, you know, latissimus dorsi and all these other guys, right, that we talked about in the last video. So the rotator cuff muscles can rotate the humerus and more importantly, they're holding this whole joint together. So it's important that you have strong rotator cuff muscles, particularly if you're using your shoulders a lot. And it's important to you know, keep your shoulders in a good position so that you're using your rotator cuff muscles effectively. If your shoulders you know, start to get pulled forward and you, you're performing strong movements, then you're likely to damage the joint and damage the muscles. You, um, you can strengthen your rotator cuff muscles very simply. Um, you don't tend to need to use a lot of weight, you tend to use elastic bands, right? So, would you hold on to this? And then you do, you keep your arm nice and straight and square, and against the, the force you do medial rotations. You're just rotating the humerus. And then, ooh, yeah, you can feel a nice little burn anteriorly. So you get, uh, so we're getting subscapularis here, aren't we? With medial rotation. If you put the hand the other way, and then you're pulling in the other direction. So you see how the humerus there is rotating. So then with lateral rotation exercises, we're hitting the posterior muscles, and I can really feel that there. We're using infraspinatus and teres minor. And that's how you keep your rotator cuff strong. Something like that anyway. Okay, so there are six muscles linking the scapula and the humerus. Um, four muscles uh, form the rotator cuff. The muscles of the rotator cuff insert high into the head of the humerus so they can rotate the humerus. Um, but their most important function is holding the head of the humerus into the glenoid fossa, into the glenoid cavity, and hold that glenohumeral joint together. Um, subscapularis is innervated by the upper and lower subscapular nerves. Supraspinatus and infraspinatus are innervated by the suprascapular nerve. Teres minor is innervated by the axillary nerve, as is the deltoid muscle. Teres major is also innervated by the lower subscapular nerve. Um, and those are all branches of the brachial plexus, unsurprisingly, because it's running through the axilla. Okay, so that's the, that's the rotator cuff, and those are the deep muscles of the shoulder. Make sure you can identify them. Make sure you remember how they insert into the humeral head, and then you'll hopefully remember which way they rotate the humerus. All right. I wonder what we'll do next week. There's plenty of stuff to do in the shoulder. Maybe I'll still be enthusiastic about the shoulder. We'll find something else to talk about in the shoulder. Um, well, okay, thank you very much. See you next time.